munching on a bit of chocolate cake here that was sent to me through the post today from a really good friend. Who does that? That's so great. Oh, and it's really good cake as well. I'm a very happy girl right now. Oh. I read an awful lot. I counted my books today specifically for this video and it turns out I have a lot more than I thought I did. I have 376 books. I could start a library. I haven't read all of them because I've got a really bad book buying addiction. I'll be reading one book but by the time I've finished it I would have bought 10 more. But because I have so many I have a lot of favourites so I thought I'd give you my top 10 favourite books. However, I've left out The Potters, Twilights and Hunger Games because I love all of those series equally and I couldn't possibly pick a favourite. So, at number 10 we have Green Angel by Alice Hoffman. I read it when I was around 10 but it still remains to be one of my favourite books. It's the story of a girl who loses her family and has to learn to live on her own in the retreat of her garden and discover exactly who it is that she is. At number 9 I have The Doomspell by Cliff McNish. Again, I read these before I even reached my teens, but it's the first fantasy series that I really got into. It's about two young children who find themselves in another world and then discover that they've got magic powers. It's slightly Narnian, but much darker. Number eight is The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom. It's about this old man who dies saving a little girl, and when he goes to heaven there are five people waiting for him, who he affected in his lifetime, and they're there to explain his life to him. It's really nice because it's a book about how you can affect someone's life and change someone's entire world without ever really knowing them. At number seven is An Offer You Can't Refuse by Jill Mansell. I can't resist a bit of chick lit every now and again, and this just happens to be my favourite. Right, answer me this. What do you do when your boyfriend's mum offers you £10,000 to break up with him? Read it and find out. So good. Happy Ever After by Adele Jarass is at number six. This is a, a modern retelling of Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. If you ever thought those fairy tales were too fantastical to ever relate to, read this because it's just proof that you don't have to be a princess to live your life like a fairy tale. Number five is The Book Thief. This is the first book I've come across where the main character has blonde hair and brown eyes. It's a rare combo. This book is narrated by Death, and it's about his encounters with a little girl who's living in Nazi Germany, and she keeps stealing and saving books from book burnings. I cried a lot whilst reading this, so if you're gonna give it a go, have some tissues at the ready. Number four is The Eternal Ones by Kirsten Miller. This is part of a series, and I haven't read the next bit yet, but I just really liked this book. It's about a girl called Haven who keeps having visions and flashbacks of a past life that she once lived, and she feels like there's a boy who she once lost that she needs to find again, but little does she know that he's also looking for her. Top three now, these are the really good ones. Number three is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The circus arrives without warning, no announcements precede it, it is simply there when yesterday it was not. Just read it. it. I can't even explain what is in this book. You just need to read it and love it. Number two is Grow Up by Ben Brooks. Ben is actually an old boyfriend of mine, but he's a bloody good writer. I would read the blurb, but it's not exactly family friendly. 18 and up, but um, it's really good. It's about being a teenager and experimenting and growing up, and it's really good. If you're old enough, read it. <laughs> and finally, at my top spot, and it's going to take a lot to knock it off the top position, but it's One Day by David Nichols. Every chapter is the same day every year for 20 years, and it's about Emma and Dexter, and how their relationship evolves, breaks down, and finally comes together. Again, it's a tearjerker, but oh, it's so good. I've never had a book speak to me as much as this one did. And plus, it's hilarious as well. It's really funny, but... It gets sad, so be prepared. So yeah, that's my top ten. Look them up, they are so good. And I've given a few of these books to people who don't like reading and they've read them within a week. They are just that good. So seriously, give it a go and yeah.